Welcome to the Daily Race. We are in our study on the book of Romans, uh, Paul's letter to the church in, in Rome. Uh, it's one of his most organized letters, one of his most uh, 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 theologically um, based letters. And that what I mean what I mean by that is obviously uh, theology is the study of God. That's obviously found through all scriptures, but he's building a case for for the gospel. Um, why it's it's grace alone, faith alone. Um, why it's incompatible with mixing other things with it. So yesterday we, we started with the introduction to, to Romans and it finished with this sentence in, in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 17. It says, This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. This is the good news, good news, the gospel, uh, that it's completed by God start to finish by faith. That's the good news. Today though, we're going to talk about the bad news. For there to be good news, there needs to be bad news. And, and that's what this next passage uh, is. So after saying that, after saying it starts from, from start to finish through faith alone, and then it says, but. <laughs> oh, transition word, right? Now we're taking a different direction. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That, that, that sounds like completely like, wait a second, I thought God was a, a good God, a loving God. He loves everyone. What happened to, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son? What, what are, where does this angry God come from? His anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Is, is, is God two-faced? Is, is there a different God, is there like a, a nice God and a mean God? Let's read here what, what it's actually referring to. Yes, God is angry angry. He has anger that burns towards sin, towards people who are displaying sin, which is everyone. Everyone displays sin. But read, let me read here. It says this. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. But what we're doing here is we're, we're backing up here. We're backing up. Why is the good news necessary? Why did God have to come down here to earth to rescue mankind? And it goes all the way back to the beginning. It says because at, at, at some point, even though God created this universe, placed mankind in it, and made it obvious, obvious through his creation, that it wasn't just an accident, it wasn't just by chance, that there was a creator, men and women have chosen to believe otherwise. They've chosen to ignore the evidence and create their own narrative. This own narrative is the sin narrative. It's, it's in response, it's in a rejection of God, even though he's made it as obvious as he could through the created world. I mean, you go out into nature, and you look at the beauty of nature, you study science and the intricacy of science, it takes a conscious decision to say, yeah, this just, there's no creator involved in this. There's, just because you can piece together why things work, it's a whole nother step to say, yeah, and that's incompatible with God. There's no creator that, that started this, this process we see here on earth. That's what he's talking about here. That's what's led to these types of things. He's going to give it in more detail here. It says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish of ideas, foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. So when we reject, <laughs> when we reject God as creator, we start coming up with our own narratives. And I'm not just talking about, about science here. Uh, this, is, this is bigger than just that. Yeah, that, that's one part of it. Uh, but it's so much bigger than that. We say, okay, we're rejecting God. So then we create our own lowercase gods and how we interact with them and what's important. We're, we're just making it up as we go. We've detached ourselves from truth, from, from the God who created the universe, and mankind bins, begins creating their own narratives. So, of course, there's, def, there's not one narrative from that point. There's a million different narratives because everyone gets to choose their own path. Everyone gets to create their own, their own origin story. Everyone gets to create who and how to connect with, with the divine, how to, or completely ignore it altogether. The, the, once you detach from the truth that, that God created everything, that he has a plan and purpose, then his, his way is the best way. From that one thing, then it goes into a million different directions. 
everyone choosing, and it says, as a result, their minds became dark and confused. When you walk away from the light, you're walking into darkness. They're claiming to be wise, but instead became utter fools. Instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols and made and made to look like people and, uh, and human, made, made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So, so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie, so they worshiped and serve the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. So, so what did God do? God said, you can make this choice. It says God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. He's summarizing the first part of Scripture. He's summarizing the fall and the continued fall of man after that. It says that the man chose wrong and continued to choose wrong and made up their own pathway. By the time it got to, to Noah, right, God grieved that he'd even made mankind in the first place. Um, Noah was the only righteous person that was still acknowledging that, that God was a creator, that God was the one that should be worshipped. Everyone else had their own narrative. And it kept on getting worse and worse and worse. Once you go down this pathway, you enter into darkness, you start creating whatever you want to do. You're taking the natural for the unnatural. Ways that God created us to live and you're twisting and turning those things upside down. This affects all areas of life, from the way that relationships work, to sexuality, to uh, uh, morals, to what's right and wrong. It's Everything's just shades of gray once you take the truth out of it. That's the case that Paul is laying down here. He's, he's summarizing uh, in, in, in a few short passages here, you know, thousands of years of, of, of history of, from, from the fall up until, you know, we, we get the account of, of redemption going here. So... He's laying out, this is how bad it gets. It's not, and it's the fault of man, that, that we've rejected God. Mankind has rejected God. He, he made himself known. He made himself apparent. He created the universe, and we've chosen to become our own versions of God. Create our own rules, go by our own desires, twist things around. Almost in a sense, he kind of lays this out here, so foolish that, Whatever the natural inclination to what God says to do, we flip it upside down and do it the opposite way. That's, that's what darkness does. It disorients. This is the condition that God came into the world to rescue us from. And this is why the good news is so good, because on our own, we, we abandon truth. We, we walk away from God in, in every area of our life. So, he says this, as we finish up this, this chapter, says, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, hater of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent new ways of sitting and disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyways. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. Even, even when you're ignoring God's plan and God's standard, even when you ignore uh, uh, trying to, to live by, by God's, God's guidelines, when you do these things, deception, quarreling, murder, uh, proud, boastful, we, we know that they're wrong. Internally, we know that this is not a helpful way to live our life. This is, is causing pain and hurt and destruction. We know that, that, that we feel guilt from that, yet we do them anyways. And to make ourselves feel better, people that are trapped in this, they encourage others to join into it. This is the bad news. This is the consequence of sin. This is the consequence of sin. See, see, once that ball started rolling, once Adam and Eve said, God, we know a better way. We don't believe that your way is the best way. That once that ball got rolling, imagine like that little snowball at the top of the hill. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more destructive and more destructive. That, that sin impacts and affects everything. That, that left on its own, it destroys everything in its past. 
It turns everything of God upside down. It takes God's way and distorts it and tricks us into thinking that that's the proper way. That is the bad news. That's, that's the world that God sent his one and only son into. This is how bad it is. So this shows us how good God's love is. Remember that first question? How, how, could, God, how could God show his anger? Because he sees the damage that this is causing. He sees the, the damage and the pain and the suffering and the distortion and, and the, the hurt that this is causing. This causes him anger, which is why he comes down to rescue us. We're going to get into that in the next chapters. But in order to stand how good the gospel is, how loving God is, this is the world that he came into. A world that completely rejected and turned their back on truth. That's God's love. Let's pray. God, as we, we look at this, this bad news here, God, we read about um, the consequences of sin. God, we can see that evidence in our life. Maybe not to, to this extent, but God, we see that when we, we turn from you, when we, when we dabble in darkness, God, it distorts. It, it causes us to, to justify things that, that we know that are wrong. God, it, it causes us to, to want to bring others into that sin to make us feel better. Forgive us. Forgive us the times that we felt that our way was better than your way. Forgive us for the times where we have forged out on, on our own path and tried to justify wrong behavior. God, we need you. God, your way is the best way. Your way provides for us, protects us. God, help us today to take each right step in your direction. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.